Right everyone, thanks for coming today. We're here to talk about two films, Slumdog Millionaire and Crash, and I suppose we'll start with Slumdog Millionaire. So do you want to just watch like a brief introduction to it? Yeah, cool. That's cool. Slumdog Millionaire is the story of Jamal Malik, a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the biggest show on Indian television. Jamal is one question away from winning 20 million rupees, but how did he do it? Did he cheat or is it his destiny? How could a boy from the slums of Mumbai have known all the answers? Arrested on suspicion of cheating, Jamal recounts to the police the story of his life with each event relating to a question on the show. Jamal is searching for Latika, the girl he has loved his whole life. Eventually, Jamal triumphs, and afterwards he is reunited with his true love. His destiny has been fulfilled. So, what do we all think of the film? Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. Like it's a fun film to watch. Like it, it, it's sweet as well in some aspects. Um, and one thing I noticed right from the start was like the the, the colouring in the film. It's all bright yellow, bright reds, you know, heavy greens. Like and in the opening scene, um, it's kind of you have the, the the juxtaposition of who wants to be a millionaire, which is fairly familiar like it's yeah. it's, it's 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 one thing you, you 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 know you know the format and that feels normal and then on the the, the, the other side you're in a, a like a sweaty heavy yellow stained interrogation room so I, I enjoyed that like the the, the moving between the two even though it's, it's kind of he's in the same position in both both aspects like but it's it's a different world and it brings you into the world pretty quickly. Yeah, so I, 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 I enjoy that. Like the mm. It's beautifully shot. The, the colours are really vibrant and you can almost touch the colours. Um, you've got the clothes, of, or the colours of the clothes, the, the deep bright oranges and pinks and blues, but then you've also got the colours reflected in the, um, the, even the trains. When you see the trains go by, there's a blue train and, a, and an orange train and I think there's a green train as well. Mm. And um, even the, the, the shanty huts, they're different colours, bright blues and pinks and yeah. it's just a lovely, lovely visual. Oh, completely. Extravaganza, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. Um, why do you think they shot it like that particularly, like with those colours? What was the specific reason, do you reckon? I think the colours kind of reflect the mood of the people who live in the shanty towns, yeah. the poor areas. Because even though they're very poor and they've got no money, they're still happy people. In one scene you see um, a shot of people dancing around a fire and it's just, it just it's, a, it's a lovely feel-good yeah. um, movie in that, in that aspect. Do you think it's a kind of westernised view of India? Like is it an accurate view? Do you reckon, like I've never been there myself of course, but do you think it's kind of, it's been exploited almost to India to look like this? Um, either a completely magical, exotic place, or else a harsh, you know, gritty. You know. I guess, I guess, um, for me, there are two kind of parallel situations here. One is the story yeah. um, of Jamel, and when you're watching it, you get completely caught up in the emotional side of it. Is he going to become a millionaire? And just imagining how his life would turn around completely if he could, uh, if he could win the, the million. Um, and you see uh, the poverty and the beggars and the disabilities and the child being pawned off, the girl being pawned off um, in order to enhance the, uh, the, the uh, possibilities for the little beggar girl you know, to get more money if she has a baby who's crying all the time. Remember that part of it? Mm -hmm. um, and then when you come away from it, and, and of course there's a, re there's a feel good factor, when you come away and analyse it, it is an absolutely horrific situation because you're looking at... Um, um, a devastated community, a community I suppose that has never really gone beyond devastation. Uh, you know, the, the Brits were there uh, until 1947, they pulled out, but little has changed for the millions of working class people in India. Um, and we're exposed to that side of it, you see the poverty and so on. Um, is it 
17 billion or something, the population of India is it's a huge population mm -hmm. and increasing all the time. Yeah. Um, so to, to analyse it from that point of view, it's quite horrific. There's a lot of racism in it and it does seem that uh, the film has been created, you know, for as a Hollywood project. A complete. Yeah, and nothing changed, even for the little actors, the, the little children who participated in this film, nothing changed afterwards. They're still living in slums. The actor himself, I did a little bit of reading about him, the actor himself is actually, nothing has changed much for him either. He's being offered roles in as, as terrorists mm -hmm. or as ro a robber or so something that's very... That's be, that's be, yeah, that's building into the... Um, feeding into the stereotype of what people expect from Indians. Yeah. But actually I found this movie perfectly okay because India is portrayed as a jewel in the crown. Yeah. But this is the other side of India uh, because there is poverty where the, the poor are the poorest and there's the rich which are the rich and then the middle class. And um, the Hindu and the Muslim, they are treated, they're really bad. There's always problems, there's riots where Children are left orphans, women are left widows, and that's not a good situation. And very few people know about all these things which happen. It's like, oh, India is so much is uh, progressing in computers and stuff like that. That's what people hear, and it's portrayed. But then if you really go inside, the people in the slums live a very sad life. It's not happy, but they live a content life. They live like one euro per day, but they're still happy because they know they have they've accepted life that way. You know, and um, uh, talking about the riots, I was, I was there at that time when the Hindu and the Muslim riots were going on. And it was so bad. Everyone could be attacked. Anybody, we just leave the place and we don't know where they were coming back home safe. And the crowds and the, as shown in the movie, the crowds and the trains. And that's so, uh, but that's what I like this movie because they show the negative side of things. Yeah. Which people don't know. And the upper class and the lower class, which they have... It's really bad at this era in 06 and the 20th century, the 21st century. This is it's bad. Yeah. So they have to still break people off. people are more content than happy. They're content. They just have accepted life as it comes mm -hmm. because they can't ask for more. I guess, uh, Natalie, you're, you're far more of an authority than I am to speak about mm -hmm. India. Yes. I just think that I find it very difficult to believe that slum people, people who live in slums, are contented. You know, they may be existing, and I, again, I'm not an authority, mm -hmm. but um, for me, I'm not happy that people are contented living in slums or living on $1 a day when, in fact, we're benefiting <coughs> from their $1 a day. Like, capitalism means that one, one section of the population is benefiting while the other is actually suffering enormously. So for me, I think it's a class thing more than anything else. It's a class thing, Mary, but the thing is, they can't, they have no other option. I, I find it difficult to accept that they're happy in the situation, or contented even. Are you with me? To oh, completely, no, yeah. 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 See what you mean, yeah. Well, I yeah. got the feeling from the movie that they were happy or contented, yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. brutality and the violence in it was just shocking. Um, the orphanage scene where, you know, the little boy was taken out to sing at night time and then the way he was blinded was yeah. just horrific. So, you know, it was really, yeah. the way children were used was just quite an incredible thing. Because there's a problem of child labour there as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the sad part because they kidnap children and children are blinded and they're left on the streets. Mm. So, child labour is a very big problem in India as well. Mm. I heard that the title of the novel was Q&A. Mm -hmm. While they changed the title to Slumdog Millionaire, I found that title even a bit racist. Yes, it Do you is. Know, yeah, like, it was, yeah. yeah, and even like, and you're not even going to pick up on that too much. Mm. Like, that's just going to go over someone's head. Like, you could, oh, you're just going to see Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. Like, because even in the show, the person who was interviewing the guy, he, he wouldn't believe that this, the boy could answer, like Jamal could answer yeah. these questions. Yes. Why can't a person who is a tea, a tea seller in a call center, can, can he not have an IQ? Because he, he answered all the questions which a common person can't answer. So there is the class difference. Yeah. Oh, he's a tea seller and he can't do it. Mm. Slumdog Millionaire as well. I mean, the actors yeah. themselves objected to that name, didn't they? Slumdog Millionaire, referring to a human being, a slumdog. Slum dog. I mean, that's quite horrific. And it's, it's, it's actually continued being called that, isn't it? Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. But they don't like it. Nobody likes it. Nobody yeah. likes to be labelled. Mm. You so know, the fact that it continued being called Slumdog Millionaire would be a problem for me. Oh, completely. Because I think when he's sitting on the hot seat as well, he says that I'm a slum dog. He says that at one point of time. And he, that means he has accepted the fact. 
You're not supposed to revolt. They are suppressed. Slowly we are coming out because many people are coming out. Like I've come down to Ireland. Mm, I've changes. seen. I've seen the Western culture. I say there is so much of equality here. Why is it not happening in my country? And I'm trying. You know, I try from my side. You know, talk to my family because we start small little changes from families. Mm. You cannot change yeah. the whole country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you start with small little communities. Mm. And so I go back and I try to talk to them, like, why don't we take this off and this will make a better mm. India, mm. you know, for whatever resource we have. Even like talking about the classes in the story, one scene that hit me was um, when the American upper class tourists mm. come into it. Oh, yes, and yeah. um, I found that even, even that view of just, uh, how like they're in India and there's there's these like tree kids who've been put down all their lives by all these by the Bombay riots by society just by overpopulation everything and then like these American tourists come in and give them money mm -hmm. and it's they even say the American dream and mm. I'm like that's such yeah. a Hollywood reaction even as well yeah. it's like let's yeah. put this in like you know the charitable Americans the charitable Western culture so even there's like those small details like those bits mm. of racism here and there do you know yeah. and I don't know I I when I originally saw the film I saw it a couple of years ago and I didn't see it in the same way I've seen it now do you know from mm. a completely different perspective yeah. and as well what you were saying about like the feminist issue of like how she's not a good role model for you know um sorry Latika's character mm -hmm. like even in the end she um ends up with Jamal and it's he's um he's now like this millionaire mm -hmm. and like she is still nearly like a possession even yes. though yeah. she's happy and she's in love now but she's nothing well everything has changed for her but still like She's still the, the same place in society, yeah. it seems. But it's the perfect Hollywood ending, you see. It's the, yeah. it's the capitalist Happy ending. ending. Mm -hmm. It is once you have money, you have everything you want. And it doesn't matter whether you have your own identity, whether the woman has her own identity. Yeah. She, after all, isn't she attached to a man who is a millionaire? <laughs> oh no, it's got its flaws, definitely. The yeah. Flaws, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, well, we'll move on to our next film then. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. Crash. So will we have another brief look at it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Set in Los Angeles over a 36 hour period, Crash tells a series of interlocking stories which are all in some way defined by racism. We see a wealthy white husband and wife, the wife in particular distrustful of black people, held up at gunpoint by two black criminals, reinforcing her prejudice. We see a successful black couple pulled over unnecessarily by a racist white cop and his partner, where the husband can only watch on powerlessly as his wife is humiliated by the invasive and inappropriate behaviour of the police officer. We are introduced to a black undercover cop who's in a relationship with his Hispanic partner who he's never gotten to know. We meet his drug addicted mother and hoodlum brother whose criminal lifestyle eventually leads to his sad demise. Finally, we see an harassed Iranian shopkeeper and a Mexican locksmith where distrust and paranoia lead to confrontation and near disaster. Crash is a film about racism, how we are all victims of it and all guilty of it. It shows how true fear good people can act badly and that prejudice can affect our decisions and shape and distort our characters. So did everyone enjoy the film? What do we brilliant. think? Yeah. I mean there's so much in it. Um, it's I watched it twice. Um, I, I, the first time I saw it, I, I got so much out of it, but I, there was so much I missed that I didn't realise until the next time I saw it. And the, the web, the way the stories of the different people's lives wove into each other, you know? Um, quite an incredible, very, very clever movie, I thought. It was very cleverly done, what we thought of it. What did you think about, the, obviously the common theme of the film is racism. And yeah, absolutely. all yeah. way, shape and form. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did you feel it, they came across well, like the message that they were trying to send home. Mm. I was kind of thinking, um, like obviously it is racism. That, yeah, that, that's that's prevalent throughout the whole movie. But um, uh, my girlfriend is a counselor, and she picked up on more anger, mm. and that seemed like that was the catalyst. Like the racism was kind of happening through that. Yeah, and I found like in every scene that they they, they start off okay and then the, the music kind of built to it as well 
that by the end of the scene they, they'd have something would have happened that might not necessarily be their fault or it was but whatever happened they were now angry and the the, the method they have to, to, to unleash that was the unhealthy kind of um, the racism that started spewing from characters and you could see it that, that if these people had better ways of dealing with their anger would, would the, the, the racism not come out maybe it would anyway yeah. but, but I, I found that interesting like um, I picked up on that as well um, the the anger but I also picked up on fear between communities yeah, yeah. and um, I think it was pretty obvious that when the Sandra Bullock character and her husband were coming along and they she saw, they saw the two black men mm -hmm. and what does Sandra Bullock do she immediately kind of cuddles up to her husband because she sees a threat immediately she just looks at two black men and she presumes I'm going to be attacked and what yeah. happens they do they take the car yeah, so yeah. it's almost like that precipitates her fear her worry precipitates something in the, in the two black guys and they think well shag this whatever the equivalent yeah, yeah. is yeah. let's just do it yeah. and so the, you know it sets a whole a whole uh, series of uh, things in place yeah nothing worse than getting like a fear um, like, like validated yeah. like you know yeah, exactly even exactly. though like yeah. oh you shouldn't think this but then it does happen to me and then you're like yeah. maybe i was right to think and you can just see how it starts creeping in like you know not necessarily a bad person or a bad thing she just had a, a brief thought but then it gets validated That's and then right, the yeah. anger and yeah. then the, the, the repercussions. Um, one of the men who um, took the car, took her car, Sandra Brooks car, he, um, he was played by Ludacris and um, he was angry. Yeah. Yes. You know, what, why was he angry? Maybe I suppose he's so, he, I don't know, yeah, but maybe he saw her, you know, her, her fear and her, the racism. But he seemed to be angry all throughout the film as well. Mm -hmm. well I suppose that's, 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 that's yeah. what happens to marginalised people, I mm -hmm. guess. I, I was very frightened by Crash because I think where America is, we are going for sure. <laughs> yeah. And unless we are very strategic in our approach to uh, the growing um, immigration in Ireland, and it's still growing, mm -hmm. it's, it's, funnily enough, even though we are in a recession, mm -hmm. unless we are strategic about it, we are going to end up in a situation where different communities are pitted against each other. Mm -hmm. And that's very serious for the future of, of our society. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with getting something wrong, I think, you know, having a misconception about people, but if you work on it to, to mm -hmm. fix it, I think people sometimes when they're like, well, you just said a racist thing, they go, I'm mm -hmm. gonna, mm -hmm. you know, knuckle down and, and, and this is how I feel. But like, if people are more willing to go, you know, I sense a bit wrong, I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry, and then move on, that, that, that may be a way of dealing with this anger that can lead to these attitudes that we have. Like, it's, uh, it's just even their own view on racism, because those two uh, black characters you were saying, the guys who stole the jeep, um, you know, they had just come out, wasn't that the scene where they just come out of a, a coffee shop, they said they were waiting for an hour and a half to be served, and then the waitress was black, and then, yeah, she didn't serve us because she knew we weren't going to tip them. You know, you might say, well, how much did you leave her? And he said, I didn't tip her anything. And then they started roaring at <laughs> yeah. him and said, well, I wouldn't tip her for that kind of service. So yeah, it kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, kind, kind of a roundabout thing, isn't it, yeah. really? You know, it's interesting yeah. to watch. The best thing about the movie I liked was when the couple, the, the, the black couple, they were driving and uh, Pat Damon, the, the, the police, he follows. And then they are actually a couple. Yeah. And he follows them and, you know, uh, the way he misbehaves with them. But in the end of it, the end of the movie, he's the one who helps her yeah. as yes. well. Yeah. So in the end of it, it's like racism is two-sided. Yeah. It can be misunderstood by someone and taken mm -hmm. wrongly by the other person. Um, so it, uh, in the end, uh, everybody helps, you know, it's humanity as well. So when yeah. I saw this, first when I saw it, I was very angry with the guy. Like, he treated the woman really mm -hmm. badly. He he touched her in the wrong yeah. places and mm -hmm. that was very bad, intimidating. But then, and then at the end of the film, the thing I liked about him is he's the one who saved her as well. Yeah. So, he's the hero, yeah. isn't he? He's the, the hero, yeah. yeah. You like so, him in the end. I found that, that uh, storyline very interesting as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, his handling of, of the woman. You know, and as you said, you know, taking on a couple, a married couple, it yes. doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me whether they're married or not, but I mean, there was nothing untoward in what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and yet he was ready to take them on simply because they didn't have the same colour skin that he had. And, and that, that kind of threw me into the, the, the thinking about um, you know, why he thought he could get away with this if he thought there was going to be some accountability. Mm -hmm. the, th the bottom line is there is no accountability a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, not mm -hmm. all of the time, I'm sure. It's the same, you know, what happened there in terms of the way, the way he was, um, Matt uh, Damon's character, mm -hmm. he knew he would get 
get away with it because the person he reported into was the black detective mm. or whatever, yeah. super yeah. or whatever he was. Mm. And like that again, he knew a lot that went on but didn't report it because he was watching his own rise through the ranks as well. So it was kind of, it, it was a theme throughout the whole thing. Mm. Mm. And also he had his own issues around it, the character had his own issues around it in terms of when he spoke with um, the black woman in the hospital, do you remember that? Yeah. And he was saying that his father had had a lot of, was it 23 or something, black um, men working for him in his business, a, a cleaning business or something, mm -hmm. and that the business went belly up. So he had his own issues around that, if you like, uh, which doesn't excuse anything, but it was kind of, it permeated through the whole thing, didn't mm -hmm. it? There was once, like, I thought the Persian shop owner oh, yes. was a bit, even when um, even when he goes crazy, like he, mm. he, he goes crazy and when he shoots in the direction of a little girl with a blank bullet, um, he, still, um, he still thinks it's a divine god, yeah, a higher like power. He's an angel or something. Yeah, like and I just, I just found that, I, that really annoyed me, really, really annoyed me. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. It wasn't very plausible, I thought, yeah. like, in that kind of... You know, I have an angel, and like yeah. it, 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 it cheapened. I thought um, what they were trying to say with that character because it's it's not a resolution to any yeah. problems he has. That he's just gonna fall back on on his his um, finding religious belief. Yeah. Like I don't think it's that simple. The the, the, mm. the the problems that that man was having in the film. Um, but I liked I liked as a contrast. Then I liked his daughter. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. she was the <coughs> she was the doctor, and she mm. was you know. Did she know they were blacks? At the no, 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 she didn't. She, she, did. she, she didn't. Because yeah. 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 he, he said, said you know, box. yeah, he said yeah. Do you know what they are, and I don't think she answered. Yeah. I mean, I like the film. I think it's a very thought provoking film. You can criticize it on lots of different levels, and I suppose no matter what they were trying to achieve. You can't just, the issues are all so complex and multi layered that you couldn't in any shape or form without making it into a very clever story. Yeah. But at least I certainly think the first time I watched it, loads went over my head. The second time when I was trying to really think, well, what, are they, what are they trying to say? And if I was part of any of these people, what would I, would I think? Oh, no, how could they portray us like that or whatever else? Yeah. And to show that race, for me in Ireland, people often they seem to back into it, it has to be like a black or a white, or it's always a, a skin mm. issue, racism, which it isn't, and it's often to do with the power or money or religion mm. or whatever else, yeah. but that's the kind of segments that it goes through and, and through all different levels. But it's shown then that America isn't getting it right. You know, that, that's it, because even where the one that's shouting about, she's saying, the police officer, about the Blake lights, and then later on when she's saying to the American guy, the main policeman that has his younger brother who's the criminal, yeah. When he answers the phone to his mother and he's saying, oh, I didn't say I was sleeping with a... I, 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 yeah, I could have said it was a Mexican, that yeah. he did a white woman. Yeah. And then she's like, why did you say that? And then he's saying, oh, because if I said a Mexican, it would really piss her off. Yeah. And then he goes into a whole big thing, you know, and then she's like, get it right, El Salvador. Or somewhere. I'm not Mexican, stop yeah. calling me Mexican. <laughs> so, you know, you're thinking... Yeah. And that's, I mean, in one way, it's very nice because you're realising they're all guilty. So yeah. that's it. Yeah. It isn't about everybody's trying to find, how do I get up higher and push somebody? It always has to be an underdog. Yeah. Yeah. And, like completely good characters, like yeah. they all had their flaws, yeah. and you yes. have to give Just the film human. that. Yeah, do you know it was? Mm. Um, I also think they all had their troubles. They all yeah. had their troubles. No matter if they were a good character or a bad character, and like Matt Dillon was um, redeemed in the end, even yeah. though he started off, off yeah. where you didn't Wicked. like him at all yeah. Yeah. when he um, when he uh, molested or touched Tandy Newton's character. Mm. Yeah, you know, like he was he was the worst. Or like like to me, at the beginning, he was like. He's such a creep. I well, like the guy, the Cameron is the guy at the end that gets shot when he's trying to pull out the St. Christopher to the young people. Oh, yeah. Show. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's exactly it. I mean, it's showing you from the Matt Dillon line later on when he's saying, good luck in your career, you want to go alone in your car, or whatever. And he's saying, mm. you'd understand when, you know, it happens to us all. And he's basically saying, be longer. When you see everything, it'll make you, what's he trying to say? Racist, yeah. you know, yeah. or angry, or what is his yeah. point? And then you see exactly that. It's like his fears have reinforced it the minute he reaches for his pocket yeah. instead of taking, you know, where the guy was trying to have a laugh thinking we're both carrying around her St. Christopher, which is the saddest so bit in the film for me. Yeah. That. Also, yeah. Matt Dillon's father wasn't well as well. Yeah. So he yeah. felt a bit of compassion for him. Uh, he like, had some vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw it when it first came out and I really, really liked it. And I thought it was one of the best films I'd ever seen at the time. But as time has gone on, I like it less and less. Mm. Because I was um, the opposite. Yeah, no, I, I really <laughs> did. I um, I just, as the more I looked at it, the more I thought it's too preachy. Mm. Like yeah. the message of racism is mm. just 
hammered in. Wasn't the point about when the people were in the back of the, the truck that time mm. and the guy referred to them as Chinese, even though they'd been called Thai before yeah. that, mm -hmm. and, and you know, get them a chop suey or whatever. Yeah. So, so yeah. Is that maybe that's my. Yeah, my no, I, I can't Actually, laugh. that character as well is redeemed at the end, Ludicrous's character. You know, mm. the guy who, yeah. who he doesn't sell them. Yes. He doesn't sell oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. People, he lets them free, yeah. and then he and gives them forty dollars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's what's interesting about it as well: the title crash and how it starts with a crash, a yeah. car crash, ends with a car crash. Mm. But it's not really about the car crash per yeah. se. They mentioned that it's. And um, people in LA crash into each other yeah. Yeah. just to that's feel right. something yeah. like yes. you know, and that's to do with going back to what you said about the fear and the violence people have, and the, yeah, mm. it's yeah. it's not about racism per se. Yeah. It is, I, I, it comes down to fear. Yeah. yeah, the other way to say, lots of things are true, but the truth is deeper, and it goes back to you know the main character again when he was in the um, attorney's office, the district attorney's office, and the other guy, whatever his name is, Marshall or something, was interviewing him. And he was about to leave. He was going on the side of, of honesty, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then the brother's, the brother's file was thrown down. So if you like, he sold out. He sold his soul to an extent. Yeah. And, yeah. and similarly, um, there was another uh, piece of that where, going back to where the black superior guy and uh, Ryan Philippe's character, the flatulence mm -hmm. guy, when he was yeah. going looking for the... Um, going to bring the case about the ra the, his racist partner, Matt Racism. Damon, mm -hmm. and on, on the beat that, um, you know, he buckled again to keep the political status quo, mm -hmm. to keep his place, to keep the other guy in place. So there's a lot of that kind of selling out of the truth in order to, if you like, um, gain something else. Yeah. Institutional yeah. 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 which people say often is worse and more effective. What are we messages are we getting? Because like? mm -hmm. it just shows it on every level. Like yes. the racism yeah. filters mm -hmm. through yeah. from like the yeah. highest, like, the politician even, yeah, like the right, senator yeah. politician <laughs> to like the locksmith just right. trying to trying to look after his family. But yeah, it's an interesting one anyway. Yeah. And that's it for today anyway. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.